Yo, what is going on everyone? Steve with Bama Saltwater Fishing. Look at what kind of day it is. Absolutely beautiful out here on the Gulf of Mexico. And we're actually uh, a little bit past 30 miles. And I'm working my way out to 40, 45-ish miles, but I'm gonna start trolling before I do some bottom fishing. See if we can get some of those early summer pelagic fish, like mahi, wahoo, you know, really never know what you're gonna get. So we have our spread out of three rods. And like I said, I'll get more in depth. If we catch a fish on one, I'll show you exactly how that's set up. But I wanna have these rods in the water trolling, try to increase our odds of catching something with the time we have. Heck yeah, I just found a weed line. Really nice weed line. All right here. And that slick. We're gonna troll on that weed line, see if we can pick up some mahi. It's the X-trap around this mat. I didn't get nothing on the troll. So let's see if we can get one casting. Wow, this is amazing. Oh yeah, there's a log right there. There's gotta be something on him. Oh, there's dolphin on it. A bunch of Almaco jacks. Trigger fish. There's a big triple tail. Look at that triple tail. Bunch of Almaco jacks. Okay, I gotta tie up a little jig. I'm gonna take this gulp shrimp on a four alt gamagatsu hook and try to catch this triple tail hanging over here. I just lost where he went. Where'd he go? There's a pretty big one hanging over here. Oh, maybe not. The Almaco jacks are gonna be crazy. Look at all them Almacos. Where'd you go, Triple Tail? I know you're here. <laughs> These Almacos are going nuts. <laughs> I think I got one. Yep, I got one. There we go. <laughs> Wasn't quite the triple tail I was looking for, but there's a beautiful Almaco Jack. Check that out. Pretty fish there. He's not really big enough to get a bunch of meat off of, so I'm actually going to let him go. Typically, I would keep the little bit larger ones. But I'm looking for that big triple tail that was there. Come on, triple tail. I think I got him. Yeah, I did. There he is. Oh my God. Oh no, that's a nice dolphin. Oh my goodness. That's a nice mahi mahi. In the grass, y'all. That was awesome. <laughs> Yo, I thought I might've had the triple tail, but I got a nice dolphin on. Oh my goodness. Look at that. I hope the camera is showing this fight here. Oh, he's gonna go in that grass. Oh no. Oh no, don't go in the grass. <laughs> this is not good. This is not good to be in all that grass. Man. Oh, that's a lot of grass there. I mean, I knew they're out here. But he just ate a gulp shrimp. I hope he's still on, man. I hope he is. Yeah, he is. He's still on. This is going to be tough. It's going to be really tough. There he is. Ugh. I don't know how I'm going to do this. My gaff's right there. I just hope that that... There he is. Come on. Mm. Get this gaff over here and just keep tension on it. <laughs> this is awesome. <laughs> here he is. Oh, come on, buddy. Dude, get out of all that grass, man. Mm. Oh, where are you? Mm. Mm. Oh, there he is. Okay. I should be able to get him. Is he gonna jump again? Yeah, there he is. Look at all that grass he's in. <laughs> this is so cool. 
Oh no, don't do that. Look at all this grass he's in. Oh my goodness. Come on. Oh, he is way down there. This is not a good situation here. Mm. <sighs> Brought a knife to a gunfight just now. If you've ever heard that saying before. Mm. Where'd he go? Oh, he's down. Mm. Mm. Dude, please stop. I see you. He's just in nothing but grass. I hope that hook stays. Get him to circle ass. Ah, stop. <laughs> Dude, this is ridiculous. I'm fighting the grass and this fish. Here he is. Don't do that, please. Got him. I got him in the meat, but I got him. Yes. <laughs> This is so cool. This is amazing. Look at that dolphin. Oh man. On the Berkeley Culp. 2,500 size Daiwa reel and a seven foot medium heavy star rod. This is an inshore setup for triple tail. Just landed this beautiful dolphin. Yes. Mahi Mahi or dolphin. That is amazing. That just made the trip worthwhile. I hope y'all got to enjoy the fight with me and the anxiety and tense levels there, fighting it on the inshore setup. I knew there was a triple tail on that log. I didn't know there was gonna be this dolphin there because I had thrown some bigger baits. Thankfully that four oh my god suit hook got him good. We're gonna dispatch this fish and throw him in my cooler bag before he uh, jumps out of the boat. <laughs> what, a, what a powerful joker, that is awesome. I'm out of breath, that was not quite what I was bargained for. But look at all this grass I had to fight. My hook's in there somewhere, there it is. Yeah. But this is all sargassum weed. A lot of little bitty shrimp and bait fish live in it. Provides some great cover for those. And then in turn, it brings those pelagics like the triple tail that I saw earlier, that mahi or the dolphin I just caught. That was amazing. This is a four alt Gamagatsu circle hook, 50 pound mono leader to a little double uni knot. I was trying to get that triple tail and that dolphin ate it, which is so cool. But I'm not gonna throw it on this little thing again. That was too much. <laughs> but how awesome was that? What an amazing experience that was. I'm gonna grab another one of these gulps. I'm just using a little new penny. I nose hook it. There we go. Did I get one? Yeah, I did. I got a nice little live bait here. Those are cool. <laughs> Look at that trigger fish. Those are neat. Look at the colors on them. Really cool little things. There you go. I was hoping to use you for some live bait, but I don't think that's gonna happen. Can't use a trigger fish. Have my same spread back out again. And this is a long grass line. This one actually goes for a while. And so I have my bird here, the Yozuri Bonita there, and then the jet chain on the left, the daisy chain. Portuguese man of war. I don't want to stop because I'll get my lines all tangled up, but that's pretty cool. Thought it was a piece of plastic floating on, but that's a Portuguese man of war. Jellyfish. Dang, <laughs> that was funny. Didn't quite expect him to hit it at that time. I was messing with the trolling motor and looking at the graph. <sighs> Coming up a little bit easier. Well, I said that, now he's actually putting up a fight. All right, come on. <sighs> Be something we can keep. I'm gonna get it closer to the boat, y'all. I know you don't wanna see me reeling things up 300 foot. <laughs> There's my top shot and an Almaco Jack. Cool, we can keep him. So this Almaco Jack is gonna go in the cooler with us and we'll spike it and bleed it out. 
See how he's a little bit darker than the AJ and that very, very distinct tall dorsal fin and lower there. So they're still in the Jack family, but these don't have a limit in terms of sizes. You can keep 20 combined of reef species. So that's not a bad little Amico. He'll eat up good. I just came to a reef. I'm only 19 miles out. Now I have a little bit more daylight left. So I'm gonna drop down one of these Nomad Squid Treks lures. See if we can catch something over here. I'm using the gun on this one. Oh my goodness, this is crazy. <laughs> Y'all see this? This is fun right here. It's where you really get to put a jigging rod to the test. Just cannot let them break me off in that structure, man. Just cannot let that happen. Y'all, this is why I love jigging. I mean, it is a fight to the end on these fish here. Okay, there's my top shot. And it's a jack. Wow, that's a nice size amber jack too. Wow. That's a really pretty one there. <laughs> Woo! Y'all, that is a beast of a fish. Look at that squid right in its mouth on the Shimano and jigging rod. Let me get this out and get them back. <laughs> amber jack are not in season, but if they were, that would be a good keeper there. Heck yeah, let's jet them back down. Woo! That was fun. <laughs> Golly, are they tough. You don't want to use a super high graphite rod and high stick because it will snap. You want something that has some bend in it. See how this thing can bend like crazy? That's what you want. You want a parabolic action rod. That's why jigging rods are labeled jigging rods. I'm going to get that thing back down again. That little Nomad Squid Tracks is awesome. We'll do one more drop, but all I run is this 50 pound shock leader and this mono. And I have that tie with an FG knot to my braid. As long as that braid doesn't touch the structure, majority of the time you'll be good with that mono. It's what I primarily use. If you let them run any, they'll cut you off practically every time. Okay, I'm in them good now. I'm gonna do it a little slower. That don't, doing it slow don't, don't help either. <laughs> They're just gonna hit it no matter what. Oh, that's not good. I'm trying not to let the blank touch the gunnel. If you want to get worn down or just have a fight, come out here, do this type of jigging. Be ready to hold on to the person that, that's fighting the fish and you will have a blast. I mean, a fun time. It was pretty far down. All right, man, come on, get up here, man. <clears throat> Things are tough, I'll tell you that. It's another pretty jack. It's gonna be the last thing I think I catch today, because I'm done. <laughs> Just a few of those, he'll be finished too. Uh, man, that's a good one. <laughs> Dang good fish there. So I'm gonna make my way back to the pass while I still got some daylight. Heck yeah, that's so fun. Pound for pound, that's the hardest fighting fish on the reef. And I've caught a lot of fish off of these reefs. And AJ's, there he goes. Pound for pound are some tough jokers. Let me make my way back in while I still got some light. That was a fun trip. Awesome, I got that dolphin in the cooler too. Y'all, it's the next day. Check this out. My dolphin and my Almaco Jack's been sitting on ice. Let's pull this beautiful thing out. He's still got some of his color. <laughs> Check him out, that thing is awesome, isn't it? So cool being able to go out and do this in the bay boat. Had a great opportunity. We're gonna clean this sucker up and turn this into some mahi fish tacos. If you don't make fish tacos out of mahi mahi, I don't know what you're doing. I'm just kidding, there's a lot of good things you can do with it, but tacos is definitely delicious. It's a perfect type of meat for them. But just check out that dorsal in these things. Really cool, but they do go through about five to 10 different color changes almost from the water to the cleaning table. 
I also have my Almaco Jack in there. He's spiked and bled out. He's just gonna be grilled whole. My main focus is on this dolphin. So what I wanna do first is make an ice brine with some salt. I don't typically show this, but I do wanna share with you. I usually do this a lot with my snappers and trout and stuff. It'll firm up the meat. We're gonna get some chunks of this ice and you can do this in a five gallon bucket. You don't have to have another cooler. All right, so I've got this full of a little bit of ice. And uh, ideally you wanna do this with some salt water from offshore, but if you don't bring any with you, just take some iodized salt and then we're gonna fill this up with some fresh water. And so I'm gonna fill this up at a one to one ratio here. And all this will do is bring down the temperature of that ice because of salt. And it'll also firm up your filet when you're done. Get some salt in there. Doesn't have to be a lot. Mix that together. Yeah. Woo. Pretty salty water. So that's what our fish fillet is going to go into when we're done filleting. And that is a great way between spiking the fish to put it out of its misery bleeding it out, and then ice brining it, you'll have a nice, fresh, firm filet. So let's go ahead and get into cleaning this fish. Last time I cleaned the fish, I filleted it, and then I skinned it. I'm gonna show you another technique that a lot of people do, is pull the skin off. So you make an outline. Now they have a lot of head meat. You don't wanna miss any of that. And we're just gonna make an outline around the stomach. There we go. And then make an outline through the top as well. Just a shallow cut for now along that dorsal. Okay, and meet that first cut. There we go. I'm gonna do the same thing on the bottom. So shallow cut. Almost there, there we go. And then come down just like that. Now what we're gonna do is peel the skin off. So you can normally get a grip on it from the top or you can use little catfish skinning pliers and start peeling that skin off. Now, the reason I don't do this a lot, because you do leave this connective tissue versus actually skinning it with your knife. But it's a pretty easy way of getting all that skin off. See, just like that. There we go, now we have that really cool mahi skin. Check that out, with no meat on it. And all I'm gonna do now is fillet this whole thing off and we'll have a skinless, boneless fillet. Like I said, I don't typically do it like that because you leave this connective tissue and the red meat, but it is very easy to do. So pull back on that fillet, keep that knife along the bone. And then you wanna go up and over or once you get to that middle section, you can turn it around and start this way and just meet in the middle. Because a lot of times if you go over that big spine, you'll miss some of that meat that's paired right up there. So now that we've met in the middle, Get it right off the spine, there we go. Do the same thing here. We'll have to go around that rib cage and their big old block head. <laughs> there we go. Now look at that, that's a boneless, skinless mahi filet. And check this out, this is coming out of his stomach. He just ate that fish. Look at that. That is so cool. He had just consumed it. It hadn't even broke down its skin yet. Bait fish. 
See, these fish are not afraid to eat something big. <laughs> but I call this one something really tiny, a three inch bait. But ain't that cool? That was his last meal beside my gulp shrimp. So that'll go in the crab trap. But he had a full belly. I do want to show, now that I have it in manageable size pieces, we're going to cut down the middle and I like to get that bloodline out. It has a pretty off-putting taste. It's not gonna hurt you. You can eat it. But if you have people that don't like a very fishy, strong taste, you wanna cut that bloodline out. But like I said, manageable pieces. And then we're gonna take this filet and put it into salt ice brine. And that's what's gonna rinse our filet off and get that blood. It's gonna firm up nice and good. I'm telling you, when you put salt in ice water like that, you'll barely be able to hold your hands in there. It brings down that temperature of everything. And then the water mixed with the ice allows full surface area contact on that filet. Check out that, that is some fresh mahi though. <laughs> Not even 24 hours old. We're gonna do the same thing with this side. I wanna get that red bloodline out which when I gaffed it, he bled out a lot. So that helped. See, not too distinct of a bloodline, but they do have one. There's another nice piece. Let's see, I wanna get that out. That'll be crab trap bait, pinfish trap bait. It's almost snapper season by the time I'm making this video. That's a nice piece, another nice one. Man, this is awesome. See, in a restaurant, you probably get just that. And then some fries and whatever. Check out that loin. But we have this whole fish, and I'm actually gonna cook some in this video and eat it for dinner. And then I'm also gonna share the rest of it with some friends. Let's put our filet into this ice brine. Look at those loins. It's gonna be so good. When you go out and you spend the money, the time, and also you kind of dispatch this fish, you took its life from it, you want to respect it and take care of it. There you go. I'm going to do the rest of this fish because that was only half of it, and then I'll see y'all and get ready to cook. Yeah, so my mahi mahi has been marinating in a fish marinade. This is a fish taco marinade from Blaylock Seafood. Smelled really good. It's convenient, it's fast. When you're ready and you're hungry at the end of the day, I like to keep things simple. That's always what I try to say in my videos. You don't have to be extravagant. You can if you want, but keep things simple. So the mahi had set in that salt brine. We dried it, marinated it for 10 minutes in the fridge. Now it's ready to go on the grill. We're making fish tacos and this is our main ingredient. So I actually gave a lot of fish away to a friend of mine and neighbors. I uh, just kept what we can eat, and I like to always share. But I'm gonna lay this fish down. Uh oh, can y'all hear that? It's not gonna take long to cook, I promise you that. It's a very thin filet. Smells good. But I just have lump coals down there, the natural lump charcoal. Turn nice and gray, and now we're laying our fish on here. You can lay it directly on the grill, but I find with fish like this, it'll tend to stick. So I like to use these little grill mats. Now we're gonna grill these about five minutes on one side, five minutes on the other, and that's all it takes. And then we'll get ready to do our tortillas on here and the rest of our toppings. Y'all, it's time to flip these, but you don't wanna overcook fish. There we go. That's a good looking piece right there for tacos. See how mahi turns real white and flaky? Look at that. This is why I use these grill mats because you won't tear up your filet nearly as bad as you would going straight on the grill unless you have a nice seasoned grill. But well, this is gonna finish cooking. Man, that actually looks good. Those are firm, they've turned white, but they're not burnt or overdone. And that's what you don't want is to overcook fish. And it smells delicious. I'm gonna have my tortillas to warm up on the grill. Pretty much almost ready to eat. Give these another five minutes. Also, we're gonna start picking up our fish. Oh, dropped it. Don't wanna do that. Check that out. Oh man, I wish y'all could smell that. 
say that every time. Wow, that boat's going like over 100 miles an hour right there. That is cool. There must be a poker run or something this weekend. That was neat. See, that thinner piece is done. I'm gonna let some of these thicker pieces cook a little longer. Let's try this one out. Oh yeah, that one's finished. So, it don't hurt to pick things up at different times. Uh, now, I'm gonna pinch this one just to show you the middle. Look how flaky and white mahi-mahi is. That's why it's such a delectable and wanted fish because of how well it cooks and how versatile you can cook it. Now, like I said, I'm gonna leave these two thicker pieces on a little bit longer because like I said, they are thick and uh, we're not really looking for raw fish, but I'm not overcooking it either. So we'll let these cool down. I'm gonna throw my tortilla straight on the grill and I'm gonna flip this. Since I'm using lump coals with no lighter fluid, there shouldn't be any bad taste with these. These are natural coals and a natural fire, so we'll get that charred taste. You can also do this in the oven as well. These are flour tortillas, which I'm not a huge fan of flour tortillas under most circumstances. I love corn or maize, but these flour tortillas just hold together a lot better when it comes to tacos like this, like fish tacos and a lot of sauces. So we're gonna let these warm up. There we go. Ain't nothing like the charred taste of a fresh tortilla. These pieces are finished. Check out that caramelization on them. Oh man. Oh yeah, same thing with that one. So all of our mahi that I kept and didn't give away is cooked and finished. We're gonna let that cool down, let our tortillas warm up. And uh, we're very close to eating. We'll put our toppings on upstairs. But let me finish letting these tortillas warm up. Oh man, look at that tortilla right there. I'm gonna use the same tongs. See, that's what you want. You want them brown like that. Get a little bit of char on them. Not super crispy, but just enough char to add some flavor. We'll stack these up so they retain some warmth. And then normally you can take some of these taco shell holders or a little, it kind of looks like a wooden dowel or a rolling pin. And since I'm eating this, I'm gonna touch it. But it will retain its shape like that while they're warm. And then as they cool down, it stays in the shape. But you make do with what you have, or in this case, what you don't have. And so we're gonna finish these tortillas. Look at that, it don't take long. And see these lump coals? I'm gonna move this out of the way just to show you. Those are gray, natural wood burning. Really no chemicals in there in terms of like lighter fluid or briquettes. So if you do stuff like this, and you want some just natural charred flavor, but not a lot of chemicals, use that natural wood or natural lump coal. So there's our mahi. And like I said, I'm eating this, so I'm touching it. Obviously, you're feeding a bunch of people. <laughs> Let them do it themselves. But I'm gonna take my taco, take a piece of this flaky mahi. We're just gonna plate them up. <laughs> you can also serve this stuff over a bed of rice too. With that, if you don't have tortillas or don't feel like doing tortillas. Now all we gotta do is go put our toppings on there and chow down. We have made it inside. It's time to just do some simple toppings on our tacos. Now you can do some uh, white queso and some jalapeno chilies or cabbage if you want. But right here, I have this spicy corn relish. I like to taste the fish and give the fish the main spotlight. So if you cover up with a bunch of lettuce, tomatoes, onions, cilantro, which is making me kind of hungry, but uh, you kind of take the spotlight away from that fresh fish. And this is what we're trying to do. I'm gonna take some of this, let's give it a smell. Ooh, smells good, smoky. And top it off with some of that spicy corn relish. And all this stuff I bought at a local specialty market. So not quite at your normal supermarket. So the stuff's made pretty dang good. And then I'm gonna leave three without it because everybody, when they get home, they all have personal preference on taste, so I'll let them do their own. But all I have is some salsa verde, some tortilla chips for dipping. And let's move over our Mahi Mahi tacos. Check that out. Man, that looks awesome. Let's go outside, back out into the beautiful area. It's just so pretty out there and enjoy this plate of food. You see me eat out here a lot just because of you, the awesome feeling of enjoying nature 
and enjoying a fresh meal straight from the waters behind of us except the mahi i mean this body water is connected to the gulf but this one came out about 40 miles so not something i get all the time let's give it a bite <laughs> okay the fish is delicious on its own that spicy corn relish and the charred taste of the flour tortillas just enhances it so much wow that is good for it to be so easy and simple that is delicious let's take another bite here mm. here you go y'all can have a bite <laughs> wow highly suggest that i think there's mango in that spicy corn relish i bought because it has a nice sweet flavor that contrasts with that charred basic white fish like that man let's get a tortilla chip some of our salsa verde here this is our side oh that's some really tangy salsa mmm for store-bought salsa like i said this came from a specialty store so it's not your typical store-bought a lot of fast boats coming by if you hear that in the background but dang is that good <laughs> oh man y'all i appreciate you for watching as always if you enjoy these catch and cooks go subscribe down below to watch more if you already are you know i appreciate you Y'all, if you ever caught a mahi before, comment down below what your favorite recipe is for them. And if you haven't caught a mahi, but you do have a favorite fish recipe, go comment down below. I'd love to hear from you. But we'll see you on the next Bama Saltwater Fishing video. I want to thank the good Lord up above for everything he does for us. And we'll see you later.